हॅपी इव्हनिंग डिअर फ्रेंड्स तुम्हाला सगळ्यांना वाटत असेल देवस्थली म्हटले की आय एम अ व्हेरी कराडे ब्राह्मण हो मी ब्राह्मण आहे बट बेसिकली आय एम अ टॅम ब्राह्म ओके सो पार्डन मी इफ आय डोंट टॉक मच इन मराठी कारण दॅट इज नॉट माय स्ट्रेंथ सो आय होप ऑल ऑफ यू आर कम्फर्टेबल विथ इंग्लिश थँक यू सो मच फॉर दॅट well basically today's lecture is going to be on a very serious topic or i am not going to make it serious for the simple reason i am still a student of bhagavad gita i am not an expert on it none of us can ever ever achieve an expertise on a granth of the caliber of mahal gita so before we begin i generally begin with my lectures with a puzzle why a puzzle because puzzle arouses your curiosity what is it right from the childhood its puzzle has always been joke has been interesting puzzle has been interesting so let's talk about this puzzle let's take we have a let's say a karate brahmin boy a boy who has just become an mba and as sir was talking he wanted to do networking he wanted to know the elite in his community and elite in his area so there was one club where all these elite members would go so he wanted a membership when he went and checked for the membership they said no the membership was exorbitantly expensive which he could not afford it so he said but somebody told him there is a knack for getting into that club so you have to find out that knack so what he did one day evening our arun let's call him arun he wore a nice suit and appropriate dress to enter a club went and stood behind a pillar evening 7 o'clock the first patron comes of the club so the doorman says good evening sir welcome to the club 12 the patron says good evening 6 so please enter have a nice time in the club okay our arun is listening very carefully after about 2 3 minutes another patron comes and again the same thing doorman welcomes him and says sir six the patron says three correct <coughs> patron says three perfect now our arun knows you also understood what is it correct now arun says now i am confident i can enter the club i have found out the knack it's so easy so our arun goes he is the third patron to go the doorman welcomes him good evening sir 10 so what arun replies wonderful arun also our arun also has known the knack he says it's fine sorry sir no entry <laughs> why can anybody guess why thought process very important thought process think i know you have not all come here to think no it is 12 and 6 and 6 uh, and 3 so 10 and 5 it should be some logic is there in any coding anything there is a logic even numbers pardon even numbers no 6 is 3 it's not even number number of alphabets yes he got it correct the thought process 12 has 6 alphabets Six has three alphabets. Ten has three alphabets. Dear friends, in our entire life, we always gain knowledge from our periphery, from our externals, and we start building our subconscious mind with that. The likes, dislikes, the enjoyment. What what do we like? What do we not like? What we hate? What everything is because of that. and all the time we are reflecting on what is already into our system 
we don't end up creating something new. Okay, with that, let's begin our session. Basically, the topic which has been given to me is Bhagavad Gita and the management lessons. Well, it was just as fun or not, I cannot say as fun, it was just as during some discussions with my husband and some of his colleagues, this thought process started. Why not we do something on this? What do we derive from Bhagavad Gita? All of us, it's not going to be a preaching session, please. It's neither going to be spiritual. Because I am not as, like, you know, I am not a authority on any spirituality. So that is again the thing. So before I do the lecture, I want to make some humble submissions. Like, I am just a student of Bhagavad Gita. There is a huge, huge, huge knowledge in that, which in our lifetime, it's impossible to gain. Second, I have taken the help of various gurus and mahatmas who have done the discourses, and I have tried to the best of my mental caliber to interpret and understand them. So any fault, mistake, misrepresentation may kindly be pardoned. Hare Krishna. Well, first thing what all of us know when the Mahabharata begins, how the, Mahabharata, how the Gita begins, it's in the Kurukshetra, and Arjuna is totally chaotic. He doesn't know what to do. He is totally confused. Can we say that Arjuna was, does, did not have any skill, that's why he became crestfallen? No, he was the best Danurdar at that time. He had all the ability, all the skills, all the caliber to do the best in his field. Was he not focused? Absolutely focused. Because as an young child itself, he has proved it. When Dronacharya wanted to examine his pupils, what happened? He is the only one who gave the correct reply. All of this talked about everything else other than the bird and the eye. But Krishna and Arjuna was the only person who talked about the eye and the arrow was allowed to be shot. So leaving here, let's go to understand, we have to understand what is the present management. Management, all of you know, is as old as the history of mankind. Man, each meant. So there is man. So the moment man has come into this earth, management principles have started. And basically managing multifarious activities with knack, with tact, you know who's the best manager? And how can you learn management? Your housewife. Not necessarily mother, your own housewife. She has cooked only for four people, two more guests come. And you wonder how is she going to manage? But on the table the food is served for everybody. Management, resources. She knows how well to use the resources, how well to plan, how well to organize, how well to coordinate. She coordinates between two maids and ensures that the work is done at home. No need to go to any management schools to learn management. Keep your eyes open, what you see in the house, what the lady of the house is doing, and now some men also do it efficiently at home. After COVID times, a lot of men have started doing housework. So they also know the management. Well, there are two types of management. One is effective management, and what is efficient management. Can you tell me the difference? Or do they mean the same? Yeah? Um, not exactly. Anybody else? Anybody else? And what is effective? Effective. Well, basically, shall I tell you, let's talk about communication. What is effective communication? Can anybody say? The other one understands what you want him to understand. 
not what he wants him to himself to understand that is effective and what is efficient conveying the message in the proper shortest time available that is efficient way of conveying okay now the management functions are numerous vision planning strategy coordination leadership motivation excellence of work decision making effective communication team building innovation all these are encompassed now whatever we know today have always been the western management we have learned our authors peter ducker taylor all of them who have given us the concepts of management and we have tried to understand those things as management so what do they say bringing together people for achieving a common goal that's management coming together to achieve a common goal it does not it deals with problems yes this management does deal with the problem but what type of problem material problems from where can i source the cheapest material from where can i source my labor how well can i do my system so everything is external and peripheral it is got nothing to do with the only resource which i believe can never be replenished what is that the human resource it can never ever be replenished i cannot create i may create a clone having the similar physical characteristics but i cannot create a clone with the similar same intelligence here you cannot do it father and son also cannot have the same level of intelligence say so every person is unique unfortunately the present management has never ever concentrated on this aspect of human being now present management is always for improving the bottom line sell more produce more you know how do japanese strike work when they strike we have strikes right how do we strike work we don't do work and how does japanese do they produce more they say i will produce so much sell and show there is a loss to the management so they dare not make the labor go on strike now the basic concept is the worker can be easily hired fired used replaced and discarded like a tissue paper i can discard the labor like a tissue paper that is what your entire management if you know big companies like amazon they keep their middle management for 3 years from the fourth year onwards they are all the time working on them how they quit they frustrate them in their work they change the projects don't give them proper projects because after 3 years these people have become very pricey with their increments and everything they have become pricey so they don't want them unless and there are people who can be taken to the higher levels now this management now what we are seeing today around us what are we seeing today huge property everywhere you see there is buildings just now when i was coming my the driver was saying that all these places used to be farms and today they stand all buildings so the modern management has created edifice structures technology development innovations but has it created a better human life can anybody say are we having a better life than our ancestors then our car grandparents we grumble saying that our life is so bad so poor the classic example is the global warming what is happening though we are raising hue and cry carbon emission how many of us are really bothered about that the other day i was saying in the newspaper indore has got the cleanest city in india navi mumbai the third cleanest city why do we need such rewards play 
places have to be clean, simple, full stop. Cleanest. Why? You have to be clean. Now what is happening is, in the process of this management, in the process of rush, how many of us are getting some time to ourselves? We are all the time talking about progress, but at what cost we have never analyzed. Now as Virendra said, Bhagavad Gita was sung 5,000 years back, consisting of 700 slokas. We can compare it with a, I wear a ring, made of gold. What do I call it? A gold ring. But the moment I put a tiny bit of diamond, what does it become? Diamond, diamond ring. Though diamond is just one person, gold is 99 person. But the diamond has value. Same way Gita was, ha, is only 700 slokas in one lakh slokas. But it is a diamond of entire Mahabharata. Now, it is very intense. This is told 5,000 years back, but today also it is absolutely relevant in every manner. You get every small, you must be seeing in your WhatsApp, you would have got very recently, a lot of things are going on. You open any page of Bhagavad Gita, you find a solution. Yes, it could be possible. I have not tested it, but it's possible. Now let's examine the modern management concepts with reference to Bhagavad Gita. One thing is there in Bhagavad Gita, the person is given importance. It was Arjuna who was totally in despair he was totally crestfallen and Krishna in the first chapter only listened to him. Remember one thing, listening is one of the most important characteristic of a business leader. All of you here are business leaders. Always make it a point to listen. If you observe some of the Great businessmen like Ratan Tata, all these people, um, I have had opportunities to interact with uh, Ratan Tata many a times. A, he was staying close to where I used to live before in Kolaba, and on official work also we have interacted. The amazing listening power he has. He is a, he will wait till you finish, he will understand it and then respond. The most important characteristics. Now, Bhagavad Gita, there are many slokes. Again, I told you it's not going to be spiritual, so I'm not going to take the slokes and make you read them and understand. It is only that there are many relevant points which we can take from Bhagavad Gita. What it mainly says is, Every human has to do their bounden duties. What is bounden duties? Mandatory duties. If I have a family to run, I have to feed that family. I have to provide the basics for that family. If I have children, I must ensure that their future is secured. If I'm working in an organization, it is my bounden duty that I don't talk ill about my organization. Very, very important. Because that organization is what is feeding you. You cannot do a wrong thing to them. Now, in the entire, from the first chapter to the last chapter, Krishna crestfallen, broken, absolutely in despair, saying, I am not going to fight, I can't fight. Whereas Krishna totally changes him at the end of 18th chapter. In these 18 chapters, he changes him by talking to him on various aspects. Some of the aspects we will be taking. And at the end of it, yes. Arjuna regains his confidence. 
Now tell me, all of us in our businesses, we face failure. Last two years has been havoc for us. How many of us stood by? How many of us were not crestfallen? How many of us were in despair? I don't know how to feed my family tomorrow because I'm not making money. So finally, actions are natural process. A human being has to act. Now also all of you are acting. Not acting in the sense of how Shahrukh does an acting, no. I'm talking about actions are going on. Either you're pondering over my thought, or you're thinking about the dinner, or you're talking about the networking tomorrow with your friends. I don't know, but some action is going on. Idleness is totally, totally a not a natural process. Human being is not idle. We may easily say, Kai karta hai, purna divas pasun TV bakta hai. We relate that to idleness. But no, that is not a natural thing. That is why always ensure your children are all the time engaged. They don't get free time. They should never be idle. Okay, now, some of the few things which emerge from uh, Bhagavad Gita, one of the most useful thing or concept which I found was utilization of resources, which is one of the most important concept of management. Now, where does that come from? All of us know before the war began, both Duryodhana and uh, Arjuna went to meet Krishna. Krishna was sleeping. Arjuna went and sat by his leg. Whereas Duryodhana came and sat near his head. As soon as Krishna got up, first thing he saw was Arjuna. He said, what path you have come? Duryodhana said, I have come first. So, I need to be answered. Then they discussed about the war. Krishna made it one thing very clear. Me on one side, my army on the other side. What did Arjuna choose? Krishna. Why? That was a scarce resource. There was plenty of army. He had the support of so many kings. But what was scarce? Wisdom of the Lord. That was scarce. He chose that. Next is, all of us know, Karmanne Vadikaraste. Very easy to say. Do all your jobs without any expecting any results. So all of us say, when there are not going to be results, what is the use of making an effort? What is the necessity for doing it? All of us, all of you are cricket enthusiasts. How many of you have seen MS Dhoni's um, interviews? Has anybody seen? What does he say? Have you ever seen him extremely happy or extremely sad at the end of the match? Totally balanced. Why? Because he was he is very clear. He told very clearly in one of the interviews, I believe in the process. Result is a byproduct. Nothing else has been told in Gita. Same thing has been told in Gita. He says, when the process is on, I ensure that every small thing is taken care of. Every small little thing, who should be the bowler? How should I choose my team? How, what are the important things I should know about my opponents? How should I know my pitch? Every small thing I must know. Then only it will be possible for me to form a proper team coach them properly, ensure that the entire process is done, go to the field, perform, leave the result. Okay, many times if the process is perfect, I get the result. But if the process is not perfect, I lose. But remember, losing also is a learning experience. This he has told in one of his interviews. Basically, why Krishna says, leave your results, is because you're going to, today is, you have all come for the meet here. 
all of your entrepreneurs and professionals. You have come here looking at business opportunities. Don't deny it, it's a fact. You have come here for business opportunities. Now you are going to only concentrate on that. Oh, this person, not, no, no, he is of no use for my business, so don't bother about him. As Sir said about networking, it's not that who is going to be of use to you, what is, you follow the process, your job today, you have come, you have invested your time, remember, none of us have time. Time is the most biggest, forget about all your mutual funds and everything, if somebody can give me one extra hour every day, I am ready to give my wealth to them. Because that one hour can empower me more. All of us have this problem. Now you have invested your time and you have come here, the objective should be, I network or meet every single person who has come here rather than meeting only some person who is of use to me. Like this person, okay, he may be a CA, my business is catering, no. Who knows who is going to be your uh, help at what time? Another thing which, is, which Krishna also says in this is, be detached. Very difficult. All of us are emotional fools. And many times I do feel when God created all of us, He created the supreme. After Him, we are the supreme in the entire chain of animal. This. Then He realized this person is going to eat me up because I have given Him so much of intelligence, so much of caliber. So He created what? Greed, anger, jealousy. So I am so busy with myself in all these things that I am never able to reach up to him. So he is very safe. None of us can reach up to him. So he has created that. So he only says be detached from your work. What does it mean? Does it mean just because I am detached from the work, I am not responsible for the consequences? you see an accident happening on the road. The other day, I don't know, somebody in Delhi was stabbed. Onlookers was just watching. Can we call this detachment? But people are using this as detachment. Totally detached. Did you do your duty? Detachment doesn't mean not doing your duty. You have to face the consequences. Consequences are your karma. Again, I'm not going to go into spiritual. I don't want to go into spiritual. Okay. Now, when you are doing work, it's a work itself. We proudly talk about the English saying, work is worship. We, we are very well versed in all these American and English proverbs and everything. Work is worship. What did your Krishna say? He said the same thing. Nishkama karma. Do your job without expectation, without results oriented. He also said the same thing. Worship your work. Worship your work, what does it mean? Keep your ego outside. Ego should never enter yourself. I am telling you, friends, I mean, I am not saying yes. During any days when I was much more, like, you know, what do you say, robust and dynamic, yes, ego has not enabled me in many places. Why should I ask? Who is he to help me? Why should I ask? But today, maybe with age and maturity, Things are changing. So it helps. Now, let's go to one more aspect, motivation. What did the old school of thought say? Motivation is nothing else but carrot and stick. My labor is a donkey. He is doing work, I give him a carrot. If he doesn't do the work, I give him a kick or hit with a stick. Do you think you can do this to your employee today? 
Why? Because his basic needs are generally satisfied. What does he want? He wants something called belongingness. Okay, what do you say? Please come to my house. Can I give you a lift in my car? This is my wife, my children. Why do you say that? My. Karan, they belong to you. You belong to them. So where is the motivation? I require any motivation lectures for you, motivation uh, courses for you to educate your child. No. Your child is going to get educated because you are motivated, you want to ensure he is my child, I am going to spend as much. Now you know parents spending lakhs and lakhs and sending them to Georgia and what not just because a child wants to do MBBS. They are ready to send them anywhere, spending their full lives earning. Why? My child. So my is a very, very important concept when you are doing business. The customer should feel that comfort level with you. I always say this, when my organization prospers, I prosper, not otherwise. There can never be an individual prosperity. It can be only with the entire people and they should feel mine. You know why are the temples, most of our temples are situated in high hills? like Vaishnava Devi, Tirupati. What is Pandari Chavari? Can you, has anybody analyzed it by, what is it? When I'm walking, old, old people are walking. What is it? Nothing about it. Vittala, Vittala, motivated. Go. Tirupati, Govinda, Govinda. One who's crossing each other is saying Govinda. It's nothing else but motivation. Do it, go ahead and do it. So group motivation plays a very, very important role. Another one is Shrestha 